On February 7, 1983, a man in his early 40s was crossing the road near his home. He was hit by a driver who failed to break in time at the red light. The man's identity has been classified and redacted. He will be referred to hereafter as the victim. Witnesses to the collision who were interviewed by police, and later by agents of the SCP Foundation, indicated that the victim's most serious injury appeared to be his left leg, which was bent at an angle that strongly suggested a fracture. Though clearly in pain, he was alive and conscious, and only bleeding from a few shallow cuts and scrapes. It was just one of thousands upon thousands of traffic accidents that happen every day around the world. And it was just the victim's bad luck that he happened to be crossing at precisely the wrong moment. No one could have predicted it. Except that someone, or something, did. Onlookers reported that emergency services arrived with astonishing speed. In fact, most of those who contacted 911 indicated that an ambulance pulled up while they were still on the phone with emergency services. It must have already been in the area, they said. The man was lucky it was so close by, they said. Two figures in the crisp navy blue uniforms of paramedics hopped out of the back of the ambulance the moment it screeched to a halt and wheeled a stretcher over to the victim with the business-like efficiency of trained professionals. None of the bystanders recall either individual saying anything as they performed first aid, strapped the victim to a backboard, placed him on a stretcher, and loaded him into the vehicle. Descriptions of their physical appearance were vague, as eyewitness accounts often are. But everyone present agreed that they looked like ordinary first responders. His loved ones called every hospital and morgue in the surrounding area, trying desperately to locate him. But none of the institutions had any mention of the victim in their intake roles. The local ambulance services had no record of their employees removing him from the scene of the accident. No one present at the scene could recall seeing any specific name or logo on the vehicle that picked him up. Four days later, a woman walking her dog found the victim in a public park. His leg was no longer broken. It appeared to be in perfect working order, except that it was sticking straight out of the victim's torso. So were his other three limbs. The doctors who initially examined him were unable to explain how his body could have been reconfigured so drastically. It looked like the result of highly invasive surgery, but the operation, if that's what it was, left no visible scars. The victim's physical condition was stable, and even the cuts and bruises from the accident were gone. As far as anyone could tell, he was in perfect health. This was one of the earliest recorded sightings of SCP-4419, sometimes called the Butcher's Chariot. SCP-4419 is designated as a Keter-class entity. Its outward appearance can vary somewhat, but it always resembles an ambulance appropriate for the location where it's observed. It appears near the scene of a medical emergency shortly before that emergency occurs and proceeds directly to the scene. Two individuals, human in appearance and wearing paramedic uniforms, emerge from the back of the vehicle, secure the victim or victims, and load them inside. SCP-4419 then departs at extremely high speed. Foundation researchers have theorized that it vanishes by some anomalous means once it's no longer being observed, though there is no footage or eyewitness testimony of its disappearance. Where it goes remains unknown. Victims are returned between two and seven days later. No one has ever observed SCP-4419 in the act of bringing victims back. They are always discovered relatively near the scene of the initial incident, usually outdoors, having undergone extensive and highly disfiguring body modification. Despite the anatomical impossibility of many of these changes, the victims are always alive. And they remain alive unless the alterations to their bodies are interfered with. The specific modifications vary widely between incidents, though they are always connected in some way to the nature and circumstances of the inciting medical problem. The victim, in an incident from November 23rd of 1994, was a man whose jaw was broken in a bar fight. He returned with his mouth wedged open and a glass window installed inside it. Through the glass, his heart was visible. It had been relocated to the back of his throat. Another event, which began on January 29th of 2003, 
involved a husband and a wife who were involved in a car crash. They were left with numerous broken bones and severe bleeding before SCP-4419 arrived. When they were found, their bodies had been grafted together back to back. Every bone they'd broken was simply missing. When possible, the Foundation attempts to restore victims of SCP-4419 to something close to normal human shape, generating cover stories to explain their injuries. Victims and eyewitnesses are dosed with either a Class B or Class A amnestic, depending on their level of exposure to the event. However, removing the evidence of the bizarre surgeries always leaves some permanent damage. The case of the February 1983 collision, described at the beginning of this report, is a fairly typical example. The victim's limbs were removed from his torso, but too much time had passed to allow them to be reattached to their original locations. Records and memories were altered to be consistent with a much more severe car crash to explain the necessity of quadruple amputation. When modifications are too extensive for any semblance of normality to be restored, victims are euthanized. The two individuals dressed as paramedics vary in appearance, though their uniforms are always appropriate for the time and place. They may be the same two creatures each time, with some ability that allows them to alter their appearance, or there may be an entire organization behind SCP-4419's actions. They appear to be quite strong, and attempts to prevent them from taking victims away are met with extreme violence. In fact, one of the most gruesome incidents on record occurred when onlookers attempted to interfere with the collection of victims. It began on September 19th of 2008, with a bar fire that left 19 occupants with severe burns. When SCP-4419 arrived and the two beings began loading people into the vehicle, several people nearby confronted them. It's not completely clear why. Some believe they grew suspicious about the sheer number of people being placed in a single ambulance. Whatever prompted the confrontation, the two individuals posing as paramedics responded with overwhelming force, rendering their attackers incapacitated and unconscious. Those injured in the struggle were placed inside SCP-4419 as well. Several days later, all of the victims were found at a nearby communication center, merged into a single undifferentiated mass of flesh, which moved and shifted in an oddly fluid manner. It did not communicate or display any sign of intelligence, though it did shudder and squirm in response to physical contact. Foundation agents were unable to find an effective method of euthanasia. The mass is currently housed at Site-31, within a tank of nutrient-rich liquid. If there is any logic or purpose behind SCP-4419's actions, it is not yet understood. Some analysts believe it is indulging a twisted sense of humor. But there is a much smaller group that holds a different theory. They point to the incidents like the one which began on February 15th of 2006, when an elderly man suffered a heart attack and was subsequently abducted by the entity. He was returning with 11 additional hearts jammed inside his body. Though he died when local surgeons attempted to remove the extra organs, a few members of the Foundation believe that the redundant hearts were an attempt to protect the man from future cardiac arrest. They theorize that SCP-4419 is an immensely powerful being with a limited understanding of human biology, but a basically benevolent disposition. In other words, they believe it's trying, in its own clumsy and confused way, to help. The Foundation has not yet been able to determine how the entity predicts the medical emergencies to which it's responding, or what criteria it uses to select them. As such, Foundation personnel have never arrived in time to attempt capture. Instead, containment protocols are limited to concealing the evidence of its actions, to avoid the public becoming aware of its existence. SCP-4419 is still at large.